Hi, this is Sarah Lister from Sheffield Digital. I'm asking Matt Mitchell about his job as an engineering manager at TES and about his career path. What initially brought you to Sheffield? Well, that's kind of easy. Um, so applying to TES, uh, they have offices in Sheffield. I, I actually live in Nottingham. But when I was applying for the role, I kind of checked the, the commute. We're a global organization, but we, we see Sheffield for our UK hub in engineering as, as, as very much that as a technical hub. We are trying to establish our presence in the city. Uh, there's quite a lot of edtech companies there already, a rich history of uh, digital companies. Um, so, you know, we are looking at building apprenticeships uh, from Sheffield and um, the surrounding area, um, tapping into the universities there. There's two great universities, a lot of students. Um, so we, we really wanted to kind of promote ourselves in that city and make ourselves known uh, among those communities. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really an exciting place to work for me. Um, and it's it's new. But um, yeah, that's, that's really what brought me to Sheffield. What does your job mostly involve doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so, um, well, managing the engineers. Um, what's involved with that is making sure the squads are happy, um, they're healthy, they're being productive. Um, There's a certain element of, you know, representing the team and uh, being that interface between the business and engineering, uh, removing impediments, uh, liaising with the product team, um, you know, and other disciplines such as UX and our, our platform team. Um, and basically that ensures everybody's on the same page. Um, recruitment and onboarding is always um, quite a large part of the role, especially uh, when I joined because we had um, quite a big recruitment drive. We had a, a lot of vacancies to fill. Um, so that was, that took up a large, a large part of my time when I first joined. Um, there's the whole kind of line management. Um, so, you know, you're supporting, you're mentoring, you're coaching, uh, developing your, your, your staff, your team, uh, identifying technical training, um, setting goals and training plans and that kind of thing. And, and, and another sort of aspect of the role is contributing to our technical roadmaps, um, you know, architectural best practices, um, trying to lay down engineering standards across the teams. Um, and improving processes where we can. Um, probably my role is summed up uh, in, you know, I do spend a lot of time in meetings, uh, communicating uh, and responding to emails. Mm -hmm. And where did you learn all of these skills in terms of like recruitment, mentoring, coaching, you know, checking how people are doing, et cetera? Mostly uh, through learning on the job. Um, so, you know, you might volunteer to take on some responsibility. Uh, maybe lead on a project, um, start to mentor junior members of staff, that kind of thing. Um, you know, looking at perhaps gaps in the organization, um, doing some R&D investigations and taking responsibility for that or ownership. Um, start off with kind of managing small teams. My background is development, so, um, you know, it was technical. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of felt a need to, um, or an interest, I would say, in kind of more technical leading uh, and, you know, motivating a team and mentoring them to kind of basically do it in a better way than perhaps I was, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, divide and conquer, that kind of thing. Um, so um, that, that's mostly where I got my experience from. You know, there's the whole continual professional development as well. That mm -hmm. kind of desire to keep learning and growing. Um, leadership training. So I've done kind of project management, agile methodologies, um, ITIL. You know, there's a whole diverse range of skills you kind of need or need exposure to. Uh, and learning off experienced colleagues, working with some great people, um, working together across disciplines has been really helpful as well. Because, you know, although you may be seen as the person that knows everything, um, it's clearly, you clearly do not. So, um, you know, technology is moving so fast. Um, you know, you do need to be teachable and ability to um, rely and depend on other colleagues as well and other, other di disciplines within engineering. Do you find space or do you have like a method to stay on top of the, the speed of how things are developing in the tech world? 
Um, no, I think if I, if I did, that would be the world's best secret. But um, <laughs> I think it's just, you know, um, subscribing to things like Computer Weekly, um, looking at the leading trends in technology, um, taking time to perhaps visit or attend some conferences and, you know, what's the latest kind of frameworks and uh, the direction that technology is going in. I mean, obviously mm. in the last 10 years, that's been the cloud. Um, so, you know, getting some training and exposure to cloud technologies such as Azure, AWS, uh, et cetera. Um, and yeah, and trying to keep yourself, you know, as, as much as you can, uh, a little bit hands-on uh, where you can, although that does become quite difficult, actually. Mm. That's probably one of the main challenges, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Just keeping yourself up to date in terms of, you know, skills and training. Why do you think that in particular is challenging? Um, well, mostly because you're not now day to day coding. You're not perhaps in the scrum team uh, picking up tickets directly, although, you know, from time to time I have done that. Um, so for me, um, coding every day is what I kind of need to do to um, be competent enough and you know productive otherwise I soon kind of forget things and then you know you, you're kind of like not going back from ground zero but you you're spending more time than perhaps others would in terms of being efficient and working on you know development tasks mm -hmm. so um, because you just can't afford the time to do that anymore um, you're probably more best to sort of have that over generic kind of awareness and appreciation because um, you've, you've got to spread you can't just focus on one ticket right you've got to focus on perhaps multiple teams um, so you've got to have a bit of a high level overview so yeah you just don't have the time to really dedicate um, sufficient time to you know to do something really really well in terms of uh, coding on that ticket so you've told us a bit about the sort of day to day tasks and it sounds quite varied really even though you're spending a lot of time in meetings mm. um so what would you say are the core skills of your your job it's probably um open to debate i think you do need good technical skills uh, although you know there are we talk about perhaps those that might want to change career you know having a management background could, could lend itself well to um, transitioning into engineering manager role. But, you know, you've got to have a technical awareness, um, I think, although you may not be a dedicated coder. Um, so good technical skills, um, having a development background is big plus. Um, you know, you do need to be aware of the latest trends in technology. Um, it kind of helps if you're familiar with engineering best practices. Um, good understanding of the software development life cycle and what that entails. Um, and, you know, I'll include perhaps the DevOps um, paradigm in that, um, CICD pipelines and how that kind of fits into that life cycle now with shorter iterations and, you know, code getting shipped uh, to production in a lot, lot shorter time, time cycles. Um, aware of some agile methodologies now in terms of how we manage the work and track uh, our tasks. So things like Scrum and Kanban. Uh, then there's good people and communication skills, um, develop relationships with your team and across the business. Um, so, you know, as a manager, you need to show kind of a certain finesse and gravitas when working with key stakeholders and other managers and senior, senior leadership. Um, you need to address those team issues and, you know, uh, perhaps be a little bit more diplomatic than perhaps uh, an engineer would um, showing a degree of empathy um, acting as a servant leader so you know similar to the scrum master role you know you're you're leading your team and but you're serving them as well you're removing impediments um, overcoming uh, obstacles um, providing opportunities for them I think it's important to live and breathe the core values of the company um, so you know it's uh, demonstrate them in what you do and say Although, um, of course, engineering managers, like everyone else, aren't perfect, so we don't always get things entirely right all the time. And what would you say, like, the core values of 
that come from TES? So it's about including everyone. Um, we do it for teaching. You know, that's our ultimate goal is to improve the lives of teachers so that they can do what they do best, which is teaching, take away some of the admins uh, kind of uh, burden that they have to do as part of their role. Um, we include everyone. So, you know, we're, we're a diverse organization. Um, we don't like to work in silos. Uh, we want to spread that knowledge across the teams and consult each other. Uh, so we like to see each other as one big team, really. The other core um, value that's really, really important is we never stand still. So, you know, we're looking at continuous improvements. Um, we've done that, um, certainly. Um, another colleague of mine, we started at the same time. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. We um, looked at improving the whole recruitment process from sort of the interview questions to, to the interview format and the technical test. Um, we're looking at, to improve our code bases, obviously, and, you know, uh, making better products because um, we want teachers, uh, we want teaching staff to, to use those products um, and improve their, their jobs and how they, how they work ultimately. Mm -hmm. And what have you most enjoyed working on since you joined TES? Yeah, I could probably say quite a few, you know, different things on this, but I think it's growing and building the team um, in the sense of, you know, there's that kind of forming, storming and performing. Uh, we had to do a lot of recruitment, as I said, um, but it's been really good to develop those relationships and, um, you know, get to know them, build that trust and rapport. Uh, we are building a really good global community. So we have um, teams across the globe in TES. We have uh, teams in Australia as well as the UK. Uh, we have offshore, nearshore partners as well. Um, but we don't see each other as kind of, you know, um, separate and, well, they're just like contractors or, you know, that's just our partner. We try to integrate them as one big kind of TES family. Um, so. So yeah, helping to contribute to um, some of the innovation work we're doing at TES. So strategic level, uh, adopting new architecture, empowering the teams uh, to see them motivated. It's been really, really good. So we're looking at kind of building our next gen platform and this will help uh, TES ultimately in its journey to become a true um, SaaS edtech based company, um, you know, software provider to education. Um, so it's been really good to sort of play a little bit part in helping to um, make that happen uh, within TES. And what's it like working for the company and maybe focusing on career development in particular? It's been a really great experience, actually. Um, it's quite a rewarding and satisfying sector to be in because, you know, education, everybody has either experienced it in their lifetime at some point. Um, if you're married with children, you know, you know, your children are at school. Um, I think I did download a resource once from TES, not really knowing too much about them at the time. Um, they're obviously got a lot of history. Um, so, you know, from that point of view, it's a really good industry to be in. Um, it's a really good working environment as well. I think TES do a lot to um, look after the wealth, welfare, well-being of their staff. There's a lot of benefits. There's a really good work-life balance. Um, you know, we take pride and we work hard in what we do, but um, there's also time to socialize and, and fun. And they, they make a real effort to, you know, bring in food and have certain themed sort of social events, which is really, really good. Uh, yeah, I just found the team really supportive, um, you know, everybody's friendly um, and there's just that kind of a spirit of, um, yeah, supportive uh, relationships within the organisation and uh, in terms of career development, um, yeah, you know, that's something we're also looking at more closely now and um, trying to find perhaps pathways and, um, you know, what is the next step and that career progression uh, within it, engineering and, you know, as, new roles get um, identified and created. Um, you know, there's lots of opportunities. We are um, of probably the largest ed tech company and we acquire companies and that's part of our strategy um, going forward. So, you know, there's lots of opportunities as, as we start to expand and grow.
Um, so yeah, and um, in terms of training, um, you know, uh, there are plans in place around that. So your line manager um, is generally encouraging you and supporting you to continue to grow and develop. And, you know, we have uh, performance reviews, uh, performance plans. And as part of that, we have a personal development plan. So, you know, it's all kind of formalized and official uh, mm -hmm. and it's encouraged. How have you worked through some of the challenges that you faced within your role? One of the main challenges, as I said, when I first joined TESS, um, we uh, needed to do a lot of recruitment. Um, so we were working hard with, you know, HR, they were uh, um, liaising with agencies that we were employing. We weren't really getting a lot of joy. Um, so we had to sort of review the whole thing from sort of top to bottom, um, working with HR and heads of and other colleagues. Um, so we put in a, a process really to um, kind of shorten that recruitment process. So we were finding that, um, you know, you send out a technical test to a, a potential uh, candidate who would then sort of basically, you know, say, oh, I've got another role now. And, you know, the market was really challenging um, across the whole sector. Um, so we were competing, it was, you know, highly competitive, um, probably a short, a short shortage of uh, labor in the industry generally, uh, particularly with the software, software engineering uh, kind of skills that we were looking for, are looking for. Um, so yeah, so we had a look at uh, improving the interview questions, um, making that a little bit more focused, uh, a bit more specific. Um, we we kind of used a, an external technical test that um, we didn't really want to not do a test because um, that's kind of like our safety net, just to ensure that you know what you're kind of telling us in the interview you can actually do. Um, but it was kind of taking a long turnaround time. So we're probably looking at maybe two days to get the results. Um, so it's often taking like maybe a whole week, um, which in normal circumstances might be okay. But during the early part of the year, that was really kind of detrimental to us in terms of recruiting staff. Uh, so we actually narrowed it down to what we've got now is basically almost a one day process. So you'd have your interview you do uh, a technical pairing exercise rather than just doing a test online. So we wanna, I suppose it's really important for us is the culture. Um, you know, we really want team players. We, we don't just want kind of ninja rock stars. We want people that are gonna, you know, be teachable and um, mentor and uh, share ideas and, and, you know, take on board what other people are suggesting as well. So being a team player, so we, we kind of found that it's quite effective uh, working together, just understanding your thought processes, how to solve a problem. So that's kind of what a focus is on in terms of the technical tests rather than, you know, 100% syntax is correct and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, so we, potentially we could get an offer out perhaps at the end of the day. Uh, or certainly the next day. Um, so that's that's really helped uh, with that process. And, um, you know, pleased to say that nine months later, certainly on my vertical, <clears throat> all the teams are now really well formed. Um, you know, we filled all our vacancies, uh, but it's been no mean feat and it's been a great, um, you know, team effort uh, from across engineering, HR, and, you know, support from the business as well. Just finally, can you please offer a piece of advice to anyone who's thinking about pursuing a, a similar career as yourself? Yeah, so I think if you, you know, if you have aspirations to get into a leadership managerial role, um, you could perhaps, you know, look at volunteering to lead on uh, some initiatives in your organization maybe you've spied a gap identified something where you could uh, you know provide a solution to a problem say for example uh, or something that you're really passionate about um, set up a goal um, help lead a, a virtual team as it were on um, you know delivering that 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 goal um, if you enjoy I guess you know you do enjoy people uh, you're interested in people and uh, you have good communication skills, um, 
you know, it might be something for you to then grow into that role. Uh, have a clear vision statement uh, for your goals and that of the team. Um, you know, spend more time on the team, um, build tr uh, building that trust and growing those relationships. Um, so, you know, there may not be a role for you to sort of naturally fall into, but if you're demonstrating some of those core leadership qualities, uh, you know, you might get uh, kind of automatically earmarked for such a role because you've already been kind of demonstrating it in your in your role. Um, if not, then, you know, it puts you in good stead for, you know, applying for a um, that kind of position. Uh, continue to learn and grow your, your leadership skills. Um, I mean, for me, I do sort of a little bit of leadership in my sort of local community, various groups. Um, so that's something you could perhaps, you know, um, carry on with and kind of promote through your kind of CV and that kind of thing, your profile. Uh, get a mentor and learn from others. Uh, either personally or via blogs, um, you know, subscribe up to um, certain individuals or YouTube. Um, there's a, plenty of stuff out there on the, on the web. There's always leadership webinars and, and that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, as I said, you probably will be exhibiting some of these soft skills already, um, which is why you probably naturally want to go into that role. But, you know, there's always room for improvement and working on your soft skills. Um, keep up to date as best you can technically, because there is there is still an element of, you know, being technically uh, aware. Um, accept the fact um, that you probably will have to be less hands-on coding. So if that's something, you know, that you're not going to be that worried about, you know, if that's, that's something that you're happy to give up on, uh, you might need to consider that. Uh, and finally, probably be a great listener. Uh, it's really important to listen to people, listen to your team uh, and take advice uh, from others. Thank you for sharing your experience and your insight and what it's like working at TES. You're welcome. <laughs>